Hey, hey, everybody. What's going on? I'm here for my other, my next edition of um, Keeping It Current with Tisha, Volume 18. So let's get right into it. I mean, it's a lot that I may talk about because um, a lot has happened this week. Um, I'm going to try not to make it too long, but I'm pretty sure it may be long because I do have a lot to discuss because a lot went on this week. This has been a crazy week in both entertainment and current events. It's, it's crazy. Um, so... Uh, Sunday, after the um, Real Housewives of Atlanta premiered, Vivica Fox and Candy Burris Tucker were on Watch What Happens Live. I watch this because usually when um, Real Housewives of Atlanta or anything that comes on Sunday on Bravo comes on, I usually watch it because I watch for, you know, I watch for the Real Housewives. I watch for Married to Medicine. You know, any of those shows that come on, he usually has like um somebody from the cast and somebody else on um on the show with him so i usually watch it on sundays i don't watch watch what happens lives every day but i usually watch it on sundays so um yeah vivica fox and candy burris tucker were on there and they were just discussing the season of real house while they were talking about vivica fox being on empire so there was a question that was asked to vivica where he said um What's your thoughts on, um, I, I don't know the exact word, but I know he says something about what's your thoughts on 50 Cent saying that, um, Empire's, um, season two ratings, like, plummeted due to, like, gay stuff. And, you know, Vivica basically insinuated that 50 Cent is gay. Now... You know, she didn't really say much. Well, she kind of did because she said there was a Vibe magazine. When it wasn't Vibe, it was XXL. Uh, the magazine cover of him and Soldier Boy where she said he looked a little booty snatch. Like, he looked a little like a booty snatcher or something like that. And I was like, Vivica. So, <laughs> you know, every time Andy asked her a question, she would just look at the camera and look at Andy like, you know, do you understand what I'm saying? And I'm like, oh, my God. Lo and behold, somebody must have tweeted it to 50 Cent. He must have watched it. Somehow he found out she was talking about him. And they have been going back and forth on Instagram and Twitter all week with memes and comments. And, you know, he basically said that Vivica Fox ate his ass and Vivica Fox called him all kinds of bitches. And I'm like, you two... Just stop. I mean, I'm not going to lie. It's funny. But I'm just like, y'all need to stop. The both of you. Like, I, neutral corners. That's how I feel. So, I mean, my whole opinion on this thing is I kind of wish people would stop asking Vivica Fox about 50 Cent. Like, their relationship was like 10, 10 years ago. I think more than that. Like, 12 years ago. Yeah, I think like they went out in like 2003 somewhere. I can't remember. But the relationship is old and is dead. And it's like every single time somebody brings up 50 Cent to Vivica, she says something like, I was watching her, um, I think it was Unsung Hollywood. And they had a they, they had that special on her. And they brought up 50 Cent. And she said that she'll always love him. Like he was the love of her life. They just weren't good for each other. Which is understandable. But it's like every single time she talks about like in whatever interview... They bring up 50 Cent and she, I mean, yeah, you know, it's good. Give your, your God honest opinion, but it's like now it's getting old. It's, it's getting played out now. And I'm not saying it to be, you know, disrespectful. I'm just saying, just girl, just move on. Focus on your career. Focus on your acting. Focus on, you know, you're going to be on Empire, girl. Like you, you know, and they may do a spinoff from Empire about Cookie's family. So, you know, just look forward to that. It's just like now I think with the 50 Cent comments and whatnot now that they got this beef going on because it's still going on i think now vivica should just say no comment same with 50 cent no comment because y'all look like two children fighting on instagram like i said it's funny but it's just it's played out now i mean it's funny but it's played out like me like from seeing them being together years ago to like seeing them bicker and argue on Instagram and social media period. It's just, it's old and it's played out. Just move on. Y'all both should just say no comment and just keep it pushing. That's it. Um, veterans day was this past Tuesday. Am I correct? I want to make sure Wednesday. I want to make sure I got the day right. 
Um, so I'm just basically, I didn't, um, I didn't do a video that day, not that I remember, but I just want to shout out to all the veterans out there who have, you know, put their lives on the line for this country, all those who passed. Um, my mom is a veteran. My brother is currently in the Air Force. I have cousins that are in the Navy, the Air Force, military, all of that. So mm, shout out to y'all. I love y'all to pieces. Thank you. You know, it takes a strong man and a strong woman to do what you do. So I love you, love you, love you. Not to mention y'all are my hearts, y'all are my family. So I pray for your safety and everything every day. But it looks like you guys are doing awesome wherever you are. It looks like you guys are doing awesome. So I love you so much. I just want to shout y'all out. Um, so... Tamar Braxton had to drop out of Dancing with the Stars... Um, due to like um, pulmonary embolism, like it was sad because I don't watch Dancing with the Stars. I don't really care for Dancing with the Stars because that show just seems a little bit. It's just something about that show I do not like. I just I, I really I think there's kind of like politics involved with Dancing with the Stars. I mean I could be wrong. I don't know. I just it's something about that show I don't like. But if I do watch it. It's for, like, whoever the celebrity is that's on it. Like, I've watched it when I liked Wendy. I watched it for Wendy Williams when she was on it. Um, I tried to watch it years ago when Lil' Kim and Mel B and all of them were on it. But I couldn't. But, I mean, I just don't really care for Dancing with the Stars like that. Honestly. But, yeah, um... She had to drop out of Dancing with the Stars due to having pulmonary embolisms, and that's basically blood clot in your lungs. That's similar to what her husband had, like, a few years prior. And, you know, it's scary. It's scary, but I appreciate Tamar because that girl is a workaholic, an album, a talk show, TV shows. Like, she is doing the damn thing, but sometimes, and this is the point that I make to people who are who related to me, my fiance, everybody, your health comes first. How can you want to work, 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 but not take care of you in the process? You have to take care of you. If you don't take care of you, you are no good to anybody. You have to take care of yourself. You have to put your health before everything anything that you do because if you're not right whatever you do whatever you know um whatever job you have you're not going to be no good at it so you have to take it you have to get regular physicals regular checkups go to your doctor you know something's not right go to the hospital don't play with your health man because it's a good thing that she caught it when she did, because what if she would have continued on Dancing with the Stars and the girl would have passed out, died right on... That would have been crazy. So, yeah, you have to take care of you. And, I mean, she wasn't the only one. I remember, was it Marie Osmond? Years ago, they were about to um judge her on her dancing, and she passed out right there on camera. And then I remember um hearing earlier that... Kim Zosiak Beerman had to, um, she, she ended up in the hospital because I think she had a heart attack or something like that. Like, y'all have to take care of yourselves. You have to. I understand you have daily, and you know, I have to take my own advice because I'm the same way. But me, I try to, like, keep myself, like, you know, I, I, I go to the, like I said the other day, I went to the doctor and they told me about my blood pressure and I almost cried on the table. So now I'm doing everything I can to get that under control because I have two babies to think about and I have a fiance to think about and I have stuff that I need and want to do that has to be taken care of that nobody can take care of but me. So yeah, I'm working on getting my health together as well and I think everybody should do the same. Don't play with your health, man. Do not play with your health take care of you whatever you need to do will whatever you need to do whatever work and all of that if they don't understand and that may, maybe that's not a job that you need to be at honestly because pe human beings are not robots we 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 need sleep we need to eat we need to eat healthy we need to exercise we need to practice good habits and like i said as i'm saying this to everybody who's watching I'm, this is advice I'm giving myself as well. So we have to take care of ourselves before we jump on anything else that, that demands all of our physical attention and all of that. So yeah, my prayers are with Tay-Tay. Feel better, Tamar. 
And I hope you get better. And I hope you take this as a lesson learned. Um, so I'm praying for you. Feel better, girl. Um, so Benzino and Althea gave birth to a baby boy um, this week. They named him Zeno A. Scott. I mean, a lot of people had a lot to say about what they named the baby. I personally think it's a cute little name because we all know Benzino was not his real name. His real name is Raymond. But Benzino was his stage name. So, I mean... You know, I don't see anything wrong with the name. It's not ghetto. It's a cute little name. Zeno? That's cute. That's a cute name to me. I mean, I don't know. I, I think it's cute. I don't think nothing's wrong with it. It doesn't seem ghetto to me. It's a cute little name. I like it. <laughs> but yeah, um... But I keep hearing controversy surrounding her giving birth to the baby. Now I'm hearing that she broke up with him after she had the baby. And I'm like, come on, really? Like, I don't know how true it is. If it's true, please leave it in the comments because I haven't really been reading up much on it. I just read that she had the baby. But I think when she was in labor, I was hearing stories about her, I guess, going on like a rant, a, a social media rant about Benzino. And... You know, people were saying, well, I guess marriage boot camp didn't work. And I'm like, see, this is what I mean. I hate when before shows air or while shows are, are, are during the season, all of these allegations come out. And it, it makes a person not even want to watch the show because you already it's like watching them. It's like watching the ending of a movie first. And then trying to go back and watch the rest of the movie. But you already knew how it ends. So. It's like, I, I really don't know what to think. I don't know how true it is, but congratulations to them on their baby boy. I'm pretty sure he is a beautiful baby. I haven't seen pictures yet, but I'm pretty sure he's a beautiful baby because Althea is a pretty girl to me. Benzino. Benzino's not ugly. Benzino's not ugly to me. His neck is just weird. And I mean, I, I'm not trying to be disrespectful, but I mean, Benzino is just shaped weird. That's the only thing about, you know, I'm not, I'm not trying to shade him. I'm just saying Benzino is like built. He's built a little funny to me, but he's not an ugly dude. So I'm pretty sure that baby is gorgeous. Okay. So congratulations to them and can't wait to see pictures. And yeah, I'm going to move on. So, um, Missy Elliot. Oh my God. Missy Elliot, Missy, Miss Demina Elliot, Melissa Elliot <laughs> debuted her video for WTF, Where They From, featuring Pharrell Williams. My inner child did a happy dance. Missy Elliot. Get your freak on. Work it. The rain. Super duper fly. All in my grill. She's a bitch. One minute man. For my people. Shall I go on? <laughs> okay. Aaliyah. Genuine. Timberland. Magoo. Shall I go on? Missy Elliott. Debuted her video. For WTF with Pharrell Williams. The video was vintage, classic, Missy. Choreography, costumes, rhymes. From beginning to the end, I was like, oh, this is sick. This is sick. I love the video because it's Missy being Missy. She has not missed a beat and this woman has not come out with a video in years. And it's like she never left her and jenna jackson gonna give me heart attacks man they gonna give me a freaking heart attack because that's my childhood i grew up to that music but you know the thing that's bothering me is that people i mean wendy williams said it on her show and somebody went off on her she was basically saying that kids today won't know who missy elliott is and all this other stuff you know what i say to that that's their parents fault <laughs> because I didn't grow up in the era of the Temptations, Shaka Khan, Anita Baker, Patti LaBelle, but all of them are on my playlist because you know why? My mother faithfully blasted Patti, Shaka, Anita, Temptations, um, Nat King Cole, Jackson 5, all of them people my mother faithfully blasted in the house. So each and every one of them people I just named plus others, 
are on my playlist on my my iPod as we speak. Okay? There's no excuse. And, I mean, YouTube is accessible to anybody. So, if you need to know who Missy Elliott is, check her record. Google, Wikipedia, whatever you need to do, type in Missy Elliott. Look at her track record. That woman is a musical genius. And for her to come back like this, Missy, that album better be on its way. It better be on its way, okay? Shout out to you, Missy. You killed it. You killed it. And this is what we need in the game right now. We need that kind of music. And I just love that she didn't change anything. She's still the same Missy. It don't sound outdated. It don't... It sound... Missy. And then my favorite part of the video was when Pharrell was rapping. And I guess... I guess... I'm assume Pharrell wasn't available for the video. So they had little... um puppets as missy and pharrell and them little puppets was killing it <laughs> so yes shout out to you missy that video was bomb.com and i can't wait for your album you better not take forever to come out with it are we fighting i'm just joking i love you missy so james wright chanel um he's a um he's also he's a youtube personality he posted a video of him eating Patty LaBelle's sweet potato pie. Now, um, we all know Patty LaBelle has cookbooks. She does cooking. Um, so he was eating her pie, like her sweet potato pie, for the first time. And dude busted out, if only you knew. Like, he hit the high notes and everything. So, excuse me. And him doing so, his video went viral. And now everybody's going out to Walmart to get <laughs> sweet potato pies. And everybody is like, Patty LaBelle need to pay him in donations. They need to they need to just pay him because he upped um he upped the profits of her of her sweet potato pie recipe. And you know, so everybody on my friends list is going out to Walmart and getting sweet potato pies. And I mean, you know, tis the season. Um Thanksgiving is coming up, so I haven't tried the pie yet. I mean, I would try it just to see how it tastes and see. It. And I'm not a big fan of sweet potato pie. My favorite type of pie is apple pie, honestly. Um, for holidays, for any time, you know, sweet. I love. I like apple pie better than sweet potato pie because to me, not everybody knows how to make sweet potato pie the way it needs to be made. So I'm gonna give Patty. You know, I'm gonna give you know Auntie Patty. <laughs> That's you know Patty. Everybody Auntie. I'm going to give her a chance and try her sweet potato pie. And if I like it and this crack or whatever, you know, I might stick to that. But, um, yeah, like, <laughs> this video was hilarious. And he broke it down. And I saw other videos people was making about eating it. People writing posts about it. And I just think it's hilarious. But, you know, shouts out to him. He, he, <laughs> he went in in that video. He was singing If Only You Knew. And, like, a couple of her other hits, and I'm like, I can't. And then people, somebody gonna write something that says, um, man eats Patty LaBelle pie and turns into Patty LaBelle. I'm like, see, I can't with y'all. Y'all play too much. But, yeah, shouts out to him. So, um, moving on. Um, oh, um, Caesar, David Caesar Emmanuel from, um, VH1's Black Ink Crew was arrested while filming, um, the show's, I think, fourth season? fifth season i don't know what season they up to now but he was arrested while filming and it turns out he was arrested for um back child support now i don't know if i believe that all the way because i just recently watched season one on demand because when it first came out i didn't care to watch it but um i started watching season two like maybe last year or somewhere so i, I kind of caught up and when I was watching season one, because I keep hearing about Caesar's daughter on the show, but I've, we've never seen her. And I mean, you know, it's for his, it's probably for his own personal reason. He probably doesn't want his kids on TV, which I completely understand. Well, his, his daughter on TV, but he has shown the mother of his child. And honestly, I don't really like, I feel like she's, this is just my personal opinion. I don't know how true it is. Remember, we only see an hour of these people's lives. If that, you know, not including the editing, whatever they do at VH1. But I mean, the vibe that I got from the mother of his daughter is that she's bitter. 
Like, you know how you have some women who have babies with these guys, like, to spite them or to keep the guy around or whatever. Because Caesar says something to the effect of um, when his baby mother was pregnant with the babe, with, with, with the daughter, with their daughter, and he went to the sonogram, he was considering getting an abortion, well, telling her to get an abortion, but when he saw the, um, sonogram video, he opted out because he felt like it wouldn't have been fair, you know, and that's his kid. So instead, you know, they decided to keep the baby. And I mean, I get that. I mean, it was a, it was a, it was a good decision on his part. But him and her should have came to a mutual understanding as to how they they were going to co-parent or whatever. And I just kind of feel like the baby mother is a tad bit bitter because he didn't want to be with her or he's not with her or whatever. And the fact that he has a TV show now, you know, when people get on TV, first thing people assume is, oh my God, they got all this money now. They on TV, they big bowler, shot caller. So, you know, money and all of that changes people. So, I mean, like I said, I, we don't really know the situation with his baby mother, but just from what I'm seeing, like my observation, she seems a tad bit bitter. So I wouldn't be surprised if he has been given the child support and she's just lying and saying that he's not giving it or i remember him saying something to the effect of he was paying the child support but the how the system worked she wasn't getting it for whatever reason so i guess that was the same situation but what what i don't get is in the season in the season 1 episode duchess paid it off so how are you still not giving child support you know i mean the whole situation is confusing we don't really know what's going on but i do know that duchess got on instagram and did some rant basically it was like a real selfish move to me because she's like she's getting dragged on social media about not helping him pay his child support and she has her the opening of her tattoo shop in north carolina going on this week and she don't even know if she, if she should do it because of everything that's going on and it's like this isn't about you duchess for once this is not about you this is about caesar and his situation and i mean you know people do get on social media and they keyboard thug like i said before but you know there's a block button for a reason use it and i'm just like it's not about you this is about this man and his child support and you being there for him it's not about you and duchess does give off like that little bit of like she's selfish vibe but i mean whatever i don't know what else has happened since him getting arrested well, i haven't really heard anything else but i'm pretty sure we'll hear some, we'll we'll hear something soon so moving on um the promo for loving hip-hop new york debuted I'll explain to y'all why I rolled my eyes just now. Um, season 5 premieres December 14th. Um, so that's basically in a few weeks. Um, so here's my thing. The only thing I'm really happy about is that Remy Ma is going to be on this season. Other than that, all these new people that they bring, they bring on new people every season. Like, Love and Hip Hop New York used to be my show with the original cast. It was my show. But then when they came out with Love and Hip Hop Atlanta, Love and Hip Hop Atlanta became more interesting than Love and Hip Hop New York. And then they came out with Love and Hip Hop Hollywood. So Love and Hip Hop Atlanta is first, Love and Hip Hop um, Hollywood is second, and Love and Hip Hop New York is third in my book because they keep changing the cast. And it's like, it's so annoying to keep up with all these new people. Like, they got Young B, Cardi B... Cardi, is her name Cardi B? I don't know. And these other two girls, I mean, Yandy is still there, Tara is still there, Amina is still there, and then they have Remy Ma who's going to be there. Somebody named, I think her name is Yorma or something. Like, it's just a bunch of new people that I don't know. I'm going to be honest and say don't really care for, like, I mean, they brought back Rashida too, but it's like, what are we really talking about with Rashida? Because it's like, they just made it seem like like Rashida's Rashida's role on season three wasn't really relevant. They talked about her court case, yeah, but 
she was always referred to as a stiletto expert. And it's like, okay. And the only time, like, they really showed her is when she was hanging out with Tahiri. Because Tahiri was the, um, was a cast member at the time. But it's like, every season, they are always changing up the cast. And it's starting to get annoying now. And it's like, I liked it when it was the first and the second season. Because it was consistent. They were adding people. They weren't taking people away. But it's like, ever since Chrissy, Emily, and Samaya left. Love and Hip Hop New York went downhill and it's like nobody cares. Like they keep adding people that we don't care about or don't know about or you know and it's just it's annoying but I mean I watched the season for Remy Ma because I really want to see her come back make a a big comeback in hip hop because you know she was in jail for like I think I don't know if she did all eight years or if she was in jail for like six years or whatever but um yeah, I just want to watch and see her, pro her her progress or whatever on the show. So I'll be watching for that. But other than that, I don't really care about everybody, anybody else on the cast except for, like, you know, Yandy, of course, because Yandy got married. Um, I think Amina and Peter Guns is divorced. I want to see what's up with Tara. Like, the people who were there, I mean, I guess I'll see what's up with Rashida. But everybody else, I really don't care to see. But, I mean, I guess we'll see when the season starts. I don't know. But yeah, they said December 14th is coming on. So, okay, whatever. <laughs> so, I mean, I'll be tuned in, but whatever. So, we've been hearing about um these um the story about the University of Missouri and like their racial ten tension going on. And um, there's been a lot going on, like the, since the protests and um, white students targeting black students, and they were protesting for the basically um, until the president, I guess, of the university stepped down or something like that. So like the football players um, refused to play unless he stepped down. Um, people were vandalizing the bathrooms with um swat stickers with their like their feces like their secretions like it's just a lot of crazy stuff like bigotry racism all kinds of stuff that happened at that university and it's like super sad because it's like it's you know like so much it's been so much racial racial tension this year for like you know i'm not gonna say for no reason but it's just it just has a lot to do with people respecting people's differences and opinions. That's what it is. And it's like a lot of ignorance has been going on for years. Like ignorance, like ignorance will never be put to sleep until people learn how to respect each other's differences and um, uniqueness. Because I mean, if everybody was the same on this earth, this would be a boring, you know, it'd be a boring world we live in. So it's just like I, I don't really know the full story on it. I just know like certain details and it's been stuff going on for months. Like something about one of the students calling the black students um the N word and you know, like I said, the swat stickers and the feces and somebody saying that they'll um they're gonna target every black person they see on campus, just all kinds of crazy stuff and I'm just like <sighs> I think we're living in our last days because this is just too much stuff going on. But <sighs> moving on. Um, so this little boy in Chicago was killed. I think it was like an act of gang violence named Tashawn Lee. And everybody's in an uproar because his mom um bought a car what they um assume is the money from a GoFundMe page. Now I don't know how true it is. She claims that it's money that she saved up, but people are saying that she might have bought it with his um his funeral money that was raised from GoFundMe and um and then she flew to Vegas like the same day of his funeral. So I don't really know what to make of that story. I mean if I was just looking at the details i would say that something's kind of sketchy with that whole situation but who really knows what's going on and i just hope and pray she wasn't using like you know basically embezzling the money to get her a car and fly to vegas because that's just that's dead wrong like your baby just died you know you should be grieving you should be in mourning but whatever but i mean rest in peace little tyshawn he was only nine years old and that's very sad i hate to hear 
when kids, you know, die, like they're killed, you know, because they're so innocent. They don't even, they haven't ex experienced life yet. So, and it's taken away from them. Like, it's really, really sad. Um, let me see what else, what else, what else, what else? All right, so the last and final things I'm going to talk about, like they're pretty, it's pretty much depressing, but this is stuff that's, that went on, like, I think all of it happened yesterday, and you know, yesterday happened to be Friday the 13th, so Paris was attacked, like, by, like, terrorist bombings, I think ISIS had something to do with it, and, like, they went to like it was like at some concert where like 129 people were killed like 300 plus people were injured and a lot of them are in critical condition and they basically closed down the borders um the eiffel tower was not lit last night they cut the lights out because that was they were in mourning but everywhere else in the us of a and other countries lit up their um like their landmarks in in um support of france like out here the freedom tower and um the empire state building was um red white and blue for the like the france flag so i thought that was really sweet that we're supporting france but you know a, a bunch of people on facebook and twitter had a lot to say about um the support that people are showing, like, you know, the same thing they did with the marriage equality, where you put the marriage equality flag over your picture. People did that with the France flag today. And of course, everybody up in arms, like, oh, but y'all didn't do that when all those Nigerians were killed. And, and it's like, why do people have to question people's intentions on who and what they support? Some people care about what happened in Paris. Some people don't care. Some people are in the middle. They just, they care, but they're not going to, you know, um, follow a trend. Some people want to follow a trend. Like, just leave people alone and stop questioning what they support. Just say a prayer. And, you know, if you want to support, great. If you don't, great. It's up to you. Like, you're, you're your own person. But it's like, don't downplay somebody's support for a country. If they want to support it, then let them. Like, I hate when people do that. They question people's intentions and characters and all of that. And then you bring up, you, you want to bring up everything else. Like, Black Lives Matter and All Lives Matter and all this other craziness. And it's like, that's not the time to be doing that. And that's where all the hate and the judgment and all of that come from. Just... Say a prayer for the world because this world is just completely just it's crap. It's like it's it's too much going on. I mean, and with also that, you know, we had ISIS ISIS bombings in Beirut, um, a earthquake in Japan, you know, um an earthquake and hurricane in Mexico, um, the suicide bombing in Baghdad, and then there's something that happened in Kenya. And, you know, people are bringing up, like, the, the, the kids, the, the, the people who were killed at the um, university, like, months ago. And, I mean, all of that is sad. But why are you questioning what people are supporting? You don't know what people are doing behind closed doors. You just know by what's going on on Facebook. And this is the thing with social media. People really think that they know people through social media. When you don't. Social media is just that. Being social on the internet so you can't question a person a person's intentions by what they do and what they say on social media so i mean sometimes you can but 95 percent of the time a lot of the stuff that people post is not true it'll be false you know they'll just be posting just be posting some people don't take social media serious like others do like some people just get on social social media as a way to express themselves as a way to escape like people use social media for different th reasons so stop questioning a person's intentions i mean if you feel that strongly about it what exactly are you doing to help with all of the stuff that's going on in this world. Maybe that's what you really need to ask yourself. I'm just saying. I'm not trying to be, you know, a bitch about it. But it's just so annoying when people, when when disasters like this happen. And people want to throw in their conspiracy theories. And they want to throw in their beliefs. And that it's just, it's annoying. Just, people connect to that level or they relate to what's happening. Because it can happen to anybody. It can happen to anybody. So just stop being, you know, assholes about the whole thing. Show your support. If not, go on with your life and just, you know, deal with it. But me personally, I'm praying for the world because 
it's just, it's a lot going on. And I'm just praying that we leave a better world for our children because I especially am thinking about my kids growing up in this awful, awful world. Like it's just, it's ridiculous. But my prayers are with Baghdad. My prayers are with um, Japan. My prayers are with Beirut. My prayers are with my prayers are with Paris. My prayers are with Mexico. My prayers are with Kenya. My prayers are with anyone who need prayer right now, who need support. So that's my whole thing. And I mean, it's really sad that there's people that are so evil and malicious on this earth that they, they love seeing for some reason they love get, they get joy out of other people's pain and misery. Like it's just, it's so sad. It really is. And my heart just goes out to the people of Paris, the people of Mexico, the people of Beirut, the people of Japan, Baghdad, like, my heart is with you, and I'm just, like, really sorry that this is happening. That's the world we live in, and it sucks. So, um, yeah, I mean, that's basically it. Um, I just really wanted to, the last thing I really wanted to say was, oh, shout out to, I'm just gonna throw it out there. Shout out to Ashley Miller for shouting me out in her video i was very like so surprised when i heard her shout me out and i wrote her today and told her how much i appreciate her shout out to vh1 access daily big mouth jbcg b bcg yeah b, b no bgc sorry bgc blog um it's rock sweet addictions tv the scorpion um kevin simmons um Bondi Blue, um Miss Nika from the Ghetto View. Like shout out to everybody who's like, comment, and subscribe. But shout out to them as well because I met the majority of them at the blackout in September. And um, you know, I spoke to a lot of them. We didn't have like a long conversation, but I did speak to quite a few of them, and they really helped me get rid of my discouragement of when it when it comes to vlogging because y'all know I was vlogging in spurts back in the day so I wasn't really consistent with it but now I'm being consistent with it I do it weekly I do it damn near daily so you know I just really 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 appreciate each and every one of them for helping me push through oh messy miles how could I forget messy miles yes and he wrote me because I, I shouted him out and he wrote me and he said keep pushing keep recording keep being original yes so shout out to him too like shout out to all of them and everybody like I said who's like comment subscribed who's wrote to me because I did a depression video yesterday and there was a bunch of people who wrote me and said Thank you for doing this because people like to sweep this under the rug. I deal with this. I'm glad you shared your story. So, I mean, I'm going to do another. I think I'm going to do like more shout out videos. I think I should um, because I want to shout those people out personally. But just shout out to everybody supporting me right now. I really, really, really appreciate it. Shout out to my cousins, Tanika and Jennifer. for They showed me a real good time in Georgia when I went out there for the um, the barbecue. But I stayed. Everybody left that weekend. I stayed through. Um, I stayed an extra week. So shout out to them for supporting me. Like, my cousin is so happy for me. Um... So, yeah, shout out to everybody. And if I missed anybody, I promise I will get you in another video. I might I, I might do, like, personal shout outs more because I think it's deserved. Like, there's people who support me, and I want to give that love and support back. So, thank you so much, everybody. And like I said, if I missed you, I promise I'll get you in the next video, okay? So, um, that's the end of Keeping It Current, Volume 18. I'll see you in the next video. Enjoy your day, the rest of your Saturday, and like I said, see you in the next video. Later!